time Gather around Come on now Let's sit down Es a dona mathematics Es a dona mathematics Es a dona mathematics Es a dona mathematics there guys glad to see that you could join me again for another magnificent and marvelous math lesson with miss antonia vane all right boys and girls let's learn how to find the perimeter of compound shapes let's take a look at our lesson objectives today we're going to learn how to calculate the perimeter of compound shapes and how to solve word problems involving finding the perimeter. Let's do a quick review. In our last lesson, we learned that the perimeter of an object is the distance around it. We also talked about the units of length used to measure perimeter. Some of these units include millimeters, centimeters, meters, kilometers, inches, feet, yards and of course we can't forget miles let's do a quick review do you remember how to find the perimeter of a shape like this that is correct count the sides count with me boys and girls one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14. The perimeter of this shape is 14 centimeters. Awesome job. What about this? How do we find the perimeter? Do you remember? That's correct. We add up all the sides. So when we do that, we should have 8 plus 8 plus 3 plus 3. Of course, we can't forget our units. So that's 8 centimeters plus eight centimeters, plus three centimeters, plus three centimeters. And when we do that, we get a total of 22 centimeters. Now, let's talk a little bit about a compound shape. What is a compound shape? Well, a compound shape is a shape that can be cut into other shapes. Let's take a look at our example. Can you see where we can cut this shape to form two shapes? Yes! That's correct. That's one of the places where we can cut it so that it forms or makes two separate shapes. That's how we get a compound shape. But how do we find the perimeter of a compound shape? Well, to find the perimeter of a compound shape, add up the lengths of each side. Let's look at this shape as an example. Hmm, there are one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So our formula should look like this. Side plus side plus side plus side plus side plus side. Plus side. Now, let's replace each of those sides with a number representative. So that's 12 centimeters plus 11 centimeters plus 8 centimeters plus 7 centimeters plus 20 centimeters plus 18 centimeters. When we add all of that up, the perimeter should equal to 76 centimeters. That's correct. Now, boys and girls, there are times when we're not given all of the sides. But there's still a way that we can figure out what the perimeter is. Let's take a look. First, we must always write down our formula. In this case, our formula is side plus side plus side plus side plus side plus question mark and I put that question mark there because that represents the un 
known side. Now, we must fill in the information that we know. We know the length of all of the sides except the unknown side. So, now that's 6 plus 2 plus 10 plus 9 plus 4 plus question mark. And remember, the question mark represents, that's correct, the unknown side. Awesome job, guys. Let's now try to figure out what's the length of this unknown side. How do we do that? Let's see. Can you identify the sides that are parallel to the unknown side? If you said this side and this side, you are correct. Once we've identified those parallel sides, the next thing we must do is subtract the smaller side from the larger side. When we take 2 from 9, we get 7. So we can now fill in the missing information. Our formula should look like this. Now it's time for us to add up the length of all of the sides. And when we do that, we should get a total of 39 centimeters. But wait, what happens when you don't know the length of two sides? Well, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to solve this one right now. We do it the same way. First, we must write out our formula. So let's go. Our formula should look like this. Now, let's fill in the information we know. 6 plus 4 plus unknown plus 15 plus 10 plus unknown. Now, we need to figure out the length of the unknown sides. Let's begin with this side. Remember we said to find the length of the unknown side, we must look at the sides that are parallel to it. Which sides are parallel to the unknown side? Yes, that's correct. 10 meters and 6 meters. Remember, once we identify that, we then have to subtract. And when I take 6 from 10, I'm left with 4. So let's fill in that information. The length of my first unknown side is 4 meters. Now it's time to figure out the length of my second unknown side. To do that, I identify the sides that are parallel to it. Which sides are parallel to the second unknown side? If you said 15 meters and 4 meters, you are correct. Now we need to subtract. When I take 4, from 15, I'm left with 11. So the length of my unknown side is 11 centimeters. My formula should look like this now. Awesome! The only thing that's left for me to do now is to, that's correct, add up all the sides. And when I do that, I get a total of 50 meters. Do you think that you're ready to go on a perimeter search? I think you are. Let's see if you can identify the perimeter of these shapes. Which shape has a perimeter of 20 centimeters? Look at the shapes very carefully. Remember, when we find the perimeter, we're adding up all of the sides. Is it shape A or shape B? If you said shape B, you are correct. Let's give it another try. What is the perimeter of this shape? Is it 22 centimeters or 13 centimeters? Look very carefully because we have some 
unknown sides here. And of course, we know how to figure that out. So I'll give you a minute. Find the perimeter. If you said 22 centimeters, you are correct. Awesome job, guys. What then is the formula for calculating the perimeter of a rectangle? Look carefully. If you said A, you are correct. Awesome job, guys. I'm super proud of you. Let's do a quick review. We learned quite a number of things today. We learned that you must add to find the perimeter of a compound shape. We also learned that to find the length of an unknown side, look for the lines parallel to it and subtract the smallest side from the largest side. And of course, we cannot forget that we must use units of length to measure perimeter. You did awesome today, guys. This lesson was created by Miss Antonia Vane.